Well, hey guys, welcome back to the layout. Today we're taking a look at two Atherin ready to roll products that have been announced with Ekonami Sound, that is from Soundtracks, and released. You've got the SD40T-2 and the SD40. This is the CSX version and this is a UP version. A little different variations of the SD40 locomotive. We'll take a look at what you get for an MSRP of $199.98 starting right now. Lift the box top off. Inside is the locomotive in a plastic blister as they call it. There is a whole bunch of parts in a plastic bag on the side here. These are some detail parts you can add on your own. Looks like different plumbing, etc., that you can add to this locomotive. Kind of detail it up a little better. This is the Ready to Roll series, not the Genesis series, which means you get still a decent locomotive for a more valuable price at $199.98 MSRP. There's the quick start guide that comes in here. We'll be using that to go over the functions. Then, if you lose a part or need parts, you've got an exploded parts diagram. It will correspond with a part number, so you can call Atherin Parts Department, which I hear is pretty good, and order a part. Horizon Hobby One Year Warranty. And then the locomotive itself. Of course, we got a little static cling going on here with the Atherin News Flyer as well. But locomotive itself, tightly packed. There we go. Get this out of the box. Soft plastic and handrail protectors and hard plastic going on here. Gotten a lot of requests for CSX locomotive reviews lately, so you may see a little more CSX on my channel. This features the boxcar logo. As you can see that being revealed as I remove the handrail protections. And lots of detail to get into, so let's dig in. All right, we are about as zoomed in as we can to get the whole locomotive. But now to go a little bit further, we'll look at the front. With the nose, lighting equipped up top here. Separately applied detailed parts such as the antennas and horns. You have a sand filler hatch, MU stand, McHenry coupler, which is a plastic coupler. Accessory hoses with silver tipped ends going through the snow plow window there and snowplow opening, whatever you want to call it, but uh, that is used not to be a feature on Ready to Roll. If you guys remember the old yellow boxes of the 90s, or it wasn't yellow boxes, I think they're blue boxes, 90s and early 2000s, you usually get no accessory hoses. You got a coupler cut lever here too, battery box doors, some underbody detail such as the bell on the side and jacking pads. A little hard to see with everything being black on contrast there, but emergency shut off. Handrails are you got a little little bit of a cave going on. Uh, the protection st still has a little bit of a lean, but not much. You can see it down that angle. A little bit of curvature going on. Plastic handrails. Blower housing on the side, dustbin hatch, dynamic brake fan area up top and radiator fan area all look good. Where they really do a nice job is meeting some of the requirements of locomotives that haven't been put out yet, like this one. This dark CSX, not in the typical blue. So boxcar logo on the side is all good. You do have the safety markings for the stairway entry. Handrails are yellow where the st stairway entry is, and there's a little bit of a inconsistent paint on that, but there are a little couple little blobs here and there, but no big deal. Spare knuckle couplers on the back, and then the um, MU hose, brake wheels, dead center of the back on this one. You do see some variation with different locomotives, um, as we will see here in a minute on the SD40T-2, 
They go in the UP differences and variation differences. So not to bore you any more to death with details, but that is about it. There are windshield wipers and the windows open and close. As you can see there, inside, there's no detailed cab interior. That's part of where they, you know, save on the budget costs there. But windshield wipers on the front here, even though it's slightly out of focus at the moment. See the windshield wipers in the front. So the only thing that's really glaring to me that's different from Genesis quality is there's no cab interior. Like there was no cab camera or things like that. A um, little bit of detail differences here and there. No see-through detail on the dynamic brake fan area in the back, but there is on the top. Which I will show you the top real quick here. Lay that gently on its side and zoom out a little bit. You still get fan detail. Dynamic brake fans and the radiator fans, you can see the blades. So still, they've upped the level of the Ready to Roll series and used to not be able to be available with sound either, so that's good too. So you're getting the genesis, I think, of the 90s and 2000s with this. Uh, you've also got, on top of the accessory hoses, you've got the actual brake line hose there. So pretty decent detail for 199 MSRP, which means you're going to pay less at brick and mortar hobby shops or online retailers than even 199. So this locomotive could easily get in the 150 range, 160 range, or below, depending on how aggressive your dealer is. As you can see, ST40 T-2, a horse of a different color, different frame. It is ST40 series, but a lot different than what we looked at on the CSX. Out of the box, one of the little grates back here came off. A little bit of glue and you're back in business. Uh, looks like it's a very thin platform where those grates are mounted, so you may run into that issue. But like I said, a little bit of glue and you're back in business. These do have ditch mounted or ditch lights mounted above the anti-climber. Brake wheel, you got the long nose called a snoot nose. Air conditioner unit on the cab. Firecracker antenna. LED lights and ditch lights, McHenry coupler, accessory hoses with silver tipped ends. Have kind of a UP patched appearance on 2902. Yellow is just a little different than the rest of the body. Forward of the blower housing here, as you see right there, battery box doors. Red sill, because the SD40T-2s were, I think, ended in the 90s. So really didn't get in the yellow sill era with those, maybe a couple or a few around the system, but it wasn't mainstream by any means. Pretty decent truck detail for, for ready to roll. Bell mounted there. Again, the emergency fuel shutoff and sight glass on the fuel tank. Dynamic brake housing back here. Horn on this one is aft of the dynamic brake housing where the fans are. Compartment detail. Pretty decent for ready to roll. Handrails on this pretty straight. There is no safety tread on walkways. That's another kind of cut for the ready to roll series. You do have accessory hoses on the back end too though on this flat back on the locomotive. Or classification lights would be. You have dummy lights but you do have operating rear lights and headlights as I mentioned before. Stanchions look really good on this. A couple have started to pop out a little bit. Push them back in with the skewer and we're good to go. More on the other side. More of the same, I should say, on the other side. A little bit of nicely molded detail here. Right below the exhaust. And behind the dustbin hatch there. Again on this. You have windows that move, no interior detail, but you do have sunshades, so that's nice. We'll go ahead and fire up the locomotive. So this locomotive is equipped with LEDs, as you can see. You get a brighter kind of flat white appearance on those LEDs. Another improvement on the ready to roll line that was just really added to the Genesis line not too long ago. 
You heard the fire up. I'm going to use the Economy Diesel Quick Start Guide to go over some sounds with you. We'll do a little more than we usually do, just so you can hear what's going on here. The bell. Horn. Short horn is F3. We have dynamic brakes or straight to idle. On F4, you can hear the dynamic brake whine there. There are no lighting effects on this locomotive other than the front and reverse lights. So nothing there. F7 is the dimmer, which dims the headlight. F8 is mute. F9 and 10 aren't used. F11 is brake set. And brake release, which means if it's engaged, There's brake release. I thought that might be like a hold, but it's not. F13 coupler and uncouple. F14 will bring it down to half speed when you're moving it. It's good for switching and stuff. F13 is all aboard. Or F23 is all aboard. F24, 25 aren't used. F26 and 27 will manually notch the RPMs of the prime mover up and down. So I'll let you listen to all the notches of the prime mover with that really quick. So there you have all the notches up and back down using F26 and F27. My apologies for the horns a couple times as there was kind of sticky buttons or maybe operator error. I'm not going to divulge what exactly happened there. <laughs> but that's about it for the sounds. We're going to see how this thing moves at slow speeds because that's key to motor control. I know some people want fast run bys, some people want slow run bys. We're just going to do slow speed because that tells you if the motor control is good or if it's a jerky locomotive or not. Alrighty, we're ready to get this party started with one speed step out of 126 or 128. My DCC controller shows 126. There's one. Zoom in for you a little bit there so you can see the kind of movement we have going on there. If you'd like some help from me, it looks like it's pretty smooth with the occasional hesitation. Two. Everything seems to be smoothed out pretty good. Three. Four. And five. And we're going to reverse this because motor control can be a lot different in forward than it is in reverse. It's so one speed step for a few seconds so you can see what's going on there. Looks pretty smooth. A little hesitation again. Two. Appears to be all smoothed out. Three. And away we go. Four. And five. So pretty smooth drive. Keep in mind it's not a Genesis drive, but a pretty smooth motor nonetheless.
Time to do pull test. I've also muted the locomotive so you can hear motor noise. Pretty quiet motor. Looks like we're going to cap out at about, I was just about to say 2.1, then it creeped up a little more. And I was just about to say 2.2, and it creeped up a little more. All right. I think it stopped at 2.4 ounces. So what does that mean to you? That means about 40, 35, 40 cars. This should be able to pull those are regular sized HO scale freight cars. All right, checking bottoms real quick of the wheel flanges for NMRA compliance. Everything seems to be in good shape there. Also gives you a chance to take a peek at the underside of this guy. All right, regarding coupler height, cannot find my coupler height gauge, it's KD, so I use the NMRA one. And front one seems to be on point, the back one seems to be slightly angled down. 14.7 ounces on the weight, that's 415 grams, 0.415 kilograms, or nine tenths of a pound basically, so 14.7 ounces total. You can probably see that there as I try to eclipse my lighting in the basement. Same sound package as the ST40, but I did want to show you the ditch lights and the headlights. With a little bit of darkness here. Make sure they don't flash or anything, but they are even. They do look like the same color temperature, but with the headlight and the ditch lights. Maybe the ditch lights are a little more golden yellow than the headlight, but that's about it. There are no illuminated number boards on this but F0 and F5 handle the headlight and ditch lights. All right, I won't take up any more of your time. That is about it for the review of the SD40 and SD40T-2 locomotives from Athern, ready to roll. They both actually have a lot of similar attributes. I didn't show it on screen, but this has the exact same pull test, which was a little surprising, and it weighs 14.6 ounces. And then the sounds are the same. I showed you how this one had uh, ditch lights, where that one does not. But both have LED lighting, which is good. Economy, which is pretty good sound. Quick 360 of these guys one more time. I think overall it's a good price. And I think more manufacturers need to start thinking budget for folks that are on a budget. Because you can get these sound locomotives pretty much two for the price of one Genesis sound locomotive. Um, well, I take that back. MSRP is $199 versus $299 or $329. But at the end of the day, these things could be on sale for $140, $150 each, and you're paying, you know, $300 bucks for two or $280 for two. That's a pretty good deal. Uh, that is close to the price of an MSRP locomotive. So that's what you get with sound and pretty good detail. Uh, Genesis level detail, like I said, from the 90s and early 2000s now and ready to roll. Well, I'd like to wrap up the video with a very special shout out. I got a phone call today from trainworld.com and on the other end of the line was a guy by the name of Carter and he is with the Make-A-Wish Foundation and I got to talk to Carter. Come to find out he's a big fan of the channel and I just want to take this time to say thank you so much for watching Carter. And thanks for having the phone conversation with me today. It was nice to talk to you. And hopefully we'll see you around in your home state of Wisconsin, either at Milwaukee or somewhere else. But that about wraps up the review. Again, thanks, Carter, for being a very special viewer. And we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care. <laughs>